The classical physics that we have so far studied deals with two categories of phenomena, particles and waves. In accord with Newton's laws, particles are tiny objects like bullets that have mass and travel through space in straight lines unless a force acts upon them. Likewise, waves, like those of sound and light, are phenomena that extend in space. We're familiar with electromagnetic waves where vibrating electric and magnetic fields produce light. We've learned that when a wave travels through an opening or around a barrier, the wave diffracts and different parts of the waves interfere. Therefore, particles and waves are easy to distinguish from each other. Interestingly, it's not that simple. In following lessons, we'll see that the distinction between particles and waves gets fuzzy at the atomic level. Here's David Kagan, physics professor at Chico State University in California. Beside him is a gas discharge tube where various frequencies of light are measured with a spectroscope. We've talked about that. The wooden blocks on David's desk model the energy levels of an atom. Most interestingly, the piece of corrugated plastic he holds in his left hand is modeling not light, but electrons as they orbit the atomic nucleus. That's right, waves of electrons. For electrons, we shall see, behave not only as particles, but as waves. Here's my physics mentor, Ken Ford, whose hybrid car boasts Planck's constant on its number plate. Recall that Planck's constant is the link between the frequency of a photon and the energy it carries, as described by the now familiar equation E equals HF. We've talked about Planck's constant earlier. We'll extend its meaning in following lessons. Ken's latest books, The Quantum World and 101 Quantum Questions, facilitate learning of quantum physics. His passion for physics extends to his hobby of soaring, as his book on flying nicely testifies. Ken may inspire you as he's inspired me, big time. Here's Phil Wolf, my co-author of the book Problem Solving in Conceptual Physics. Phil is measuring the energies of electrons ejected from a photosensitive metal surface. That's right, electrons ejected by photon impact. This is the photoelectric effect, an experiment that demonstrates the particle nature of photons. So light is a wave? A particle? The answer depends on the experiment you use to measure it a quantum quark. And here's Art Hobson, a quantum physicist at the University of Arkansas, explaining the Schrodinger equation, a wave equation not of light but of matter. The equation is a mathematical description of particle-like and wave-like behavior and interactions of energy and matter. Indeed, we'll see that particles and waves merge at the atomic level. This is quantum physics. We'll learn that the rules for uncertainties and measurements of things like momentum, energy, and time have different rules at the atomic level. This is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In classical physics, we know that when you change one thing, you change something else. Every equation reminds us that making a change on one side of an equation means a corresponding change on the other side. The uncertainty principle goes much further than this. At the atomic level, it's not possible to precisely measure certain pairs of properties, such as a particle's position and momentum, at the same time. For example, the more you know about a particle's momentum, delta p, the less you know about its position, delta x. Or consider measurements of energy and time. The more you know about the energy of a particular interaction, the less you know about when it occurred. I'll return to what we call h-bar on the right side of these equations in later lessons. This becomes quite fascinating. In the first edition of the high school version of my textbook of conceptual physics, I started the chapter on quantum physics by saying it was more difficult to learn than classical physics. Soon thereafter, I met Richard Feynman at a physics conference, who had read my book and suggested I not say learning quantum physics is difficult. He said that if I put it that way, students would be biased in a bad way. So I'll just say it was difficult for me as a student. But then again, 
Feynman also made the statement that nobody understands quantum physics. This from a man who was awarded the Nobel Prize in physics for his work on quantum electrodynamics, a part of quantum physics. And by the way, before I published Conceptual Physics, it was a spiral-bound book printed by the City College of San Francisco bookstore for my classes, shown to the left of the first published college edition. And here's yours truly, happy to see it in its 12th edition. Something I would never have dreamed of. Life is good. So for now, let's venture into the intriguing world of the quantum. I leave you with this question. Is light a wave or a stream of particles? Or can it be either or both depending on how it is viewed? Until next time, good quantum.